Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a scene that I just created, kind of referencing a photograph and loosely referencing it. Um, I started with this photograph that had kind of a row of green trees in the background, and various values, some of them kind of illuminated with a warm kind of yellow light and having kind of some of these crepuscular rays shining through um, some of the spaces within those trees in a kind of a warm tone. So I tried some of that um, in this scene using some canary yellowish uh, color box pigmenting down here for these beams. It's a very, very, very subtle um, kind of warmth, and I went over with some white again, so it subdued a little bit, but um, a pretty simple composition right here. This is a half page scene. Okay, it is eight and a half by five and a half. But um, you're basically talking about one stamp. That's these pine row stamps stamped about four times. And this stamp right here is just my spruce tree stamp. Stamped once, twice, three times, I believe. I don't know if it was four times, could have been four. And then the ledge, so one, two, three stamps. But then what I did was, uh, if you watch this video, I went in and added a few little textural um, changes down here with a couple small stamps just to kind of finish things off. But the main thing about this scene was going to be about these beams, and it still is. I have these kind of light beams kind of being created by the negative space from dragging and uh, um, applying these blue tones in here and just leaving those white spaces, the negative spaces of the beams, and then kind of going in and physically adding these beams into the bottom area over the top of previously stamped imagery, applied colors, and uh, applied tones and shadows down here. So these ones were added, additive, and these ones were kind of uh, um, as a result of the negative space of the addition of the background, okay? So anyways, it was a good learning situation for me. I learned, uh, I'm still playing around with these beam types of things, but sometimes they just, they look a little bit too harsh, so I really removed a lot of ink. But the key for me was, in having these beams like this, I think the addition of some of these tones, okay, some of the additional pigment ink just in the form of this mist really makes these beams kind of come together a little bit more and uh, into kind of more of a cohesive statement as far as um, what's going on in the scene. We're saying that there's suspended moisture and when light hits that moisture, it illuminates in a certain way. In this case, it's with these beams coming through, but the moisture is in here. It's just not being illuminated as much. So I put, you know, I kind of put the statement that there's fog kind of everywhere in here. Um, and that kind of brings these beams together a little bit more. Otherwise it looked like a, I don't know, like bicycle spokes or something like that coming out there. It was a little bit too harsh, but for me, I really like this ledge down here and all the textures and the color changes that are happening in here. There's really some multi-tones in there. There's purples, browns, kind of plum tones, um, warm, distressing colors of all sorts. So, um, I don't know. It really kind of uh, provided a nice foundation for what's going on up here with the, uh, the different trees and whatnot. So. Anyways, if you choose to watch it, I hope you enjoy it, um, and I hope I don't bore you to death kind of figuring out things along the way of this scene right here, so kind of a, was a challenge to kind of bring it all together into a cohesive statement, so, uh, that, I don't know, that kind of makes sense, so, in terms of those blight beams again, so, anyways, it's always good to try new things, it's always an adventure. And, uh, you know, for a large portion of this scene, I just didn't know if it was going to come out to, you know, kind of an acceptable result. So, um, I don't know. It's always fun and exciting, too. So that's what we want from uh, scenes and stamping and, I don't know, just uh, kind of learning in general. Always try something new and see where it, you, uh, see where it takes you. 
Okay, video number 300. I had wondered what I would do for this um, video, because it's kind of a milestone video, but um, something has come up, and I need to get a Get Well card out, so that is going to be as good a reason for a card as anything, in my opinion, but I felt that um, the theme of this card would be something kind of appropriate for that. And it happens to be one of the things that I want to kind of experiment around with anyway, so I'm going to make this attempt at a kind of a ledge, a granite ledge, looking up, well not looking up, but um, that will have some tr a tree row at the top, and we're going to try these kind of light flares. Now I've been doing these kind of crepuscular ray type of experiments where you see these rays kind of coming through a, a grove of trees or whatnot, but uh, lately on the Stampscapes 2 uh, Facebook group, um, there's been some photographs posted of uh, these flares kind of going up into the sky, which kind of has a different feel to it. Um, well, it, I don't know if it has a different feel to it, but it, it just kind of adds to this whole kind of um, kind of theme, I guess, of these uh, crepuscular rays um, kind of running through things, but this time I'll have it running through kind of open sky, which has its own kind of look to it, and I don't know how we're going to do this here, but we're going to do a little experimentation and see how it goes now. Um, one of the things with the um, these rays kind of it's kind of lower set so that it's it's below the top of the tree line, but it's um, kind of flaring up into that sky. One of the things that I've noticed is that the um, the rays kind of the downward facing rays coming through like a grove of trees or whatnot, it looks like a warm toned light and the rays going up into the sky seem more neutral if not cool so I don't know it's kind of an interesting dynamic if we can kind of add some temperature into the uh, the piece or the theme of rays and whatnot so We'll see how that goes. Okay, now I'm just going and, let's see, I'm going to add this ledge at a little bit of a, kind of a arc like that, just to give it kind of a, a certain movement. Um, let's see, that's three impressions. I'll go for two more here. Okay, this is using the ledge. All right. Ledge with brush can be used, boulders with lichen. Um, if you have any other types of rocks, you can add those down there. All right, now I'm going to put some trees all along here. I'm going to try to go for the kind of more um, definitively shaped ones like this, I guess, in the center, and I'll go for these other ones. They're roughly about the same height, you know, especially the taller ones, but this one's a little bit more full. Okay, so this one's kind of be out here, so maybe I'll go for about three or four impressions using this one. And these ones will represent trees kind of farther off in the distance, but not too far, though. All right, now here's where the trick comes in. I'm purposely not showing you the photograph that I'm kind of using as inspiration. It's not right here, it's in my head. I just took a look at it, though, but one of the things about kind of referencing uh, something like that is, um, for me at least, it's if I try to kind of match something up too um, uh, perfectly or if I try to replicate something too closely it's, you know, because in a photograph you're just taking pictures of whatever exists here and in in stamping you're using what you have uh, you know, in terms of being more kind of a little bit more resourceful, um, I don't know if you don't have something, it can kind of impede kind of the creativity of just using whatever you have, you know, to create the ideal version of your existing materials rather than trying to replicate something and having an inferior version to the photograph, if that makes sense. So, anyway, that being said. 
I have colored spruce tree with black and then I'm applying some of this green. Now, one of the things that I noticed in this photograph at least that I'm kind of referencing is that um, you see a lot of color in the trees and where that light is coming through there's some lighter versions of uh, green, warmer versions. So it kind of oscillates. So on this one, it's going to, oh, I'll kind of be um, <laughs> doing a little bit of planning and uh, we'll see where it goes here. All right. The center trees are the ones that are going to be somewhat, you know, more illuminated than the perimeter, so um, so that's where I'll have, you know, a lot of the variation and light, maybe. We'll see how it goes. All right. I'm masking off some of these rocks because I don't want the entire trunk on here, okay? It's kind of set behind the, uh, the rocks or, I don't know, near them. All right, now with each impression, unless I'm going for a much lighter version of this, I'll re-ink it, okay? So I'll go with a couple taps in my black pad and I'll roughly try to remember, you know, some of the colors and where I placed it on here. Not that everyone has to be the same, but, um, I mean, you don't want it the same, but you want, you know, a little bit of, the, of similar variation. When doing this type of coloring, though, you really never know exactly what it's going to... If I did 10 impressions, I'll probably get a better feel of how they're going to imprint as far as my color coloring goes. But um, when I'm just doing a couple of these, you know, you never can tell because some inks are juicier than others, you know some you lay in there and I don't know just because of the mixture that kind of takes place it's it varies how the end uh, result looks but I'm all into variation anyway so I'm not really concerned about um, um, I'm not too concerned about the variations in terms of the end result Okay. okay, that one has a little bit more, this one's a little bit more green, and I can see my lighter value on there as well. Okay, go down like that maybe. It's going to be like a, kind of like a pillar of um, trees, like kind of a pyramidal shape like that. So I'm kind of working dark to light. I liked that kind of variation that happens when you work dark to light as opposed from light to dark, which is supposed to be how you're supposed to do this so that you don't pollute your lighter toned pens, okay? But as you can see, I just kind of wipe off that color and, you know, if your pens are fairly juicy, it comes right off. You don't need to worry about um, that too much. Personally, I don't worry about it at all. Okay, there's some lighter green. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I am working on a half page piece of paper. I did that because I, I felt I needed the space up here, you know, to get those kind of beams going up here. Um, but my first Kind of inclination would be to do it on a a quarter size sheet <laughs> just because of the time but I, I didn't feel that I'd have enough space up top there you know for those rays going into the sky if I worked on a quarter unless I really took off a lot of the um the ledge area down here so which I could have done but I don't know I didn't want this room to really be a study for, you know, a final result. 
I just wanted to do kind of what would be my <laughs> my my end result, my final piece attempt or whatever, at least as far as this composition goes. Not because I don't want to do it again, but because there are a lot of other scenes that I want to uh, kind of attempt or play around with, and uh, I don't know if you are um, kind of someone that really wants to kind of experiment around and to uh, I don't know, find inspiration, I'd, I'd recommend that uh, Stampscape's uh, Facebook group. Um, I didn't use Facebook, you know, I, I've been on there, you know, for years now, but I, I really didn't, uh, you know, participate very much with anything that Stampscape's Facebook, um, even the site, or not site, but uh, page, I guess, or whatever. Um, was created by someone, someone else, and they put me as the administrator of it years ago, but um, I really wasn't finding myself on Facebook, you know, much at all. Um, I'd usually log on if someone kind of mentioned it, and it comes in an email and it says so-and-so, you know, posted something, in faith, then I would, you know, log on through that link, so I don't know, I'm still kind of figuring out some of the kind of navigational aspects of uh, Facebook, but... Um, Anyways, what I'm getting at is there's some really amazing scenes being posted up there all the time, and it's in a variety of different media, and certainly compositions, but uh, the media and everyone's technique with the media is all pretty unique, and uh, we're seeing some really cool things. Um, all the time, so I don't know. It certainly gives me a lot of ideas. I and mean, there's so many of them, but that's a good thing, right? Okay, I'm trying to add some variation to this impression as well. This one's going on this side. So what I'm doing is, on the rubber side, on the left side. When I'm like this, I'm, it's on the right side because it's going to make an impression on, you know, upside down for this. But I'm trying to um, add a little bit of this lighter tone green, warmer tone green to some of that. Now, I really feel like stamping some of this off and then going for the impressions here. Gosh, I, I guess I'll do that. I do all that coloring, then it's like, God, do I really want to take, you know, half or more of that color off before making my impressions, but, oh well, uh, let's do that. And I'll stand this down here. This is going to look probably not that great. It's when you bring in all your colors over the top of it that, you know, a lot of this tends to make start making sense, I guess. You know, when you're working in these multiple values, especially if you change your color scheme, like I get to have um, different tones kind of in the background and whatnot, and uh, it really changes the uh, the spirit of the overall look um, when you change your uh, color schemes around. Okay, so that was that, and let's do that again. It's going to need some additional impressions, so let's go for this green again. It's uh, just called green. It's kind of a neutral green. It's um, if there was a green for Christmas, it would probably be this one. You know, it's not really warm. It's not really cool. Okay, this what is this? Olive brown. Okay, kind of mellows it out a little bit. God, this pen is super juicy. I don't know if I added water to it or what. Or just never used it, but... I have a feeling I might have added some water to it. Kind of reinvigorating it. Okay, let me see. Now this time, I will go for the left side. Lighting, kind of warmth. Embellishment, I don't know, it's not really embellishment, coloring it though. 
All right, super, super juicy. Let's wipe, but not wipe it off. Let's stamp it off once and we'll go for another impression out this way. Okay, that one stamped out lighter because I took off more ink, but all right, now let's go for some additional impressions out there. It would be a bit better if I kind of added a little bit more, kind of stacked this a little bit with a much lighter impression yet. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Okay, let me use my base color as this pale green. Okay. So something sea mist green, sea foam green, that type of thing. Well, this is going to look weird, but what I'm going to be doing is I will be bringing in um, blue tones up here, okay? And the blue tones will be running down in the rocks as well. So it, blue, relates to green, of course, because it's a part of green. So hopefully, um, it will kind of unify. Now, let me see what color this is going to be. Yeah, that'll look good. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, oops. Look at this. This pad is so old. Inking up impressions look good, but I just moved it with my hand and it broke into the foam, so I need to be careful about that with these super old pads. Alright, but it happens once in a while. Doesn't happen often, but I guess with this pad, it's time. And I'm good with uh, any type of materials that last for um, you know twenty some odd years, especially if I've used them quite a bit. Okay, that looks fine. So inking up your pad's fine. Don't kind of rub against it the wrong way. All right. Okay, now this is just pale green. I'm hoping that this will read as kind of background stamps. So it's kind of like near, farther, far. Okay. Or, I don't know, far, near, far, farther. Alright. This pad is really disintegrating on me. It's kind of fraying at a little part around where I uh, tore it. So, yeah. I'll have to see if I have another pale green. If not, they do sell blank pads now. Someone was just asking about that too on the uh, Facebook group. I'm trying to find it. Sourcing materials around the world these days, it's especially if you're in a niche kind of industry like um, you know rubber stamping especially kind of a volatile um, time in terms of um, kind of uh, materials being discontinued and I don't know if I'd say companies no longer around most of them are kind of still around but um, okay light green pale green Taking off some color off the bottom. Okay. Just taking off a lot down here. A little bit more. Or taking off a lot, a little bit less, and a little bit less. That's what I meant to say. Okay. So it's going from wet to dry. Okay. Oh, but as, as I was saying, uh, just different lines being discontinued. So you don't know kind of what's available out there as far as. Um, media goes. Um, I don't know, stampers, we tend to find our favorite types of inks. Mediums. They're always trying new things, but um, like black pad or something like that, you know. I don't know. People tend to have their favorites, kind of your basics, you know, your staples within your uh, statement. So you, you, you don't want to hear something that's been uh, kind of discontinued especially if it was your go-to 
um, whatever go to whatever uh, medium media okay so we have our foundation here look at those crumbs up there I better get rid of those otherwise it'll kind of smear all right but anyways we're looking at it kind of a not very well integrated scene but we'll do those things that um, kind of I refer to as kind of your needle and thread it's the things that kind of bind different objects and color schemes together this one will happen to be blue I'm gonna have a blue sky blue is found in green of course you add yellow to blue and you get green variations of it whatever and then this area down here will be some I don't know, I, I'll, I'll figure it out. They're not going to be blue rocks, but um, there'll be some kind of... I don't know, maybe I need to reference that scene again and uh, take a look at the uh, things, like I said, it, referencing it too closely. You're trying to be too um, um, loyal to the um, source material, just kind of at some point in time it kind of goes a little bit awry. So where you have to kind of follow the, uh, the scene and take it to where it wants to go anyway, um, you know, with the idea of, um, you know, certain type, the, whatever media is available to you. So, all right, so I do think I've left enough room up here for uh, my flares, and that lighting will be coming down this way. It'll be um, kind of shining off of that, so I'll need to figure out some sort of a um, source point for both sky flares <laughs> and you know where it's streaming through these uh, trees right here all right but I will let this dry a little those up there are a little bit juicy so and I also think I need to uh, wash off some of my uh, stylus tools easy enough but I'm kind of lazy, so I don't get around to doing that too often. Okay, I am back, and for some reason, my stylus tools were surprisingly, or remarkably, clean. Uh, I don't know how that worked out, but it did. No, I thought I used them at some point in time, so... But, uh, there's only a couple that were kind of... A little bit dirty. Or not dirty, but inky, I should say. Okay, now, let's see. We have variations of blue here. And the blue in the photo is roughly like the Bahama blue or the, uh, the light blue here. Now, I'm going to have these light beams coming around all over the place in here, okay? There's a couple different ways we do that. We do that with the addition and the application of white pigment ink, all right, but um, the flares up in the sky, it was interesting, and this is, ew, I got that crumbly little bits from that uh, pad on some of my impressions here, it's all right. Um, this little mist up in the sky, it was interesting to me because where those light beams were, we could see in the photograph this vapor, you know, this moisture, fog or whatever in the in the sky, but in the areas in the shadows, you know, that were being cast by the um, the trees where it's blocking it out, it just looked at the sky, so you have these, it's going to be like these white light beams coming up. So, that being said, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to bring in some blue tones like this, and I'm going to avoid some of these areas in here. Um, and that will, re you know, be kind of indicative of this light beam, you know, coming from, you know, lower on the horizon through some trees and up into the sky portion like that. All right, so we're going to have this thing. It's going to be something similar to what I've done um, in these kind of Aurora Borealis, Northern Lights types of things, except it's just going to be white in a field of blue. All right, that's the theory at least. That's what I'm going for. Um, we'll see what I can come up with. Okay, I'm going to pick 
Uh, there's a little spot right in here within the trees, okay? And I think that's a good, uh, as good a focal point, not a focal point, but a, a point that the light will be emanating from, okay? That little bare spot right in there. Okay, so that when I try to come back in this way, all right, I'm going to be kind of aiming towards that, okay? In this process. All right, now this is called Summer Sky, and it's not a dry ink pad. It's just super, super light in value. I might have a little bit of water in my sponge tips too, which is kind of diluting it a touch, but that's okay. Because you want this to be a fairly light um, application of this uh, ink, you know, when you're defining light. Now see, I'm trying to go for these little beams, kind of aiming right towards that little spot there. off or something like that with this. I, I'm going to try and get just, you know, the gist of it in there, you know, and I think it's enough just to kind of aim for the general vicinity. All right. Okay, there it is there again. that I'm kind of defining light through the use of tones, so uh, I kind of see it barely right now. And that's as dark as it gets there, so it's very, very light. But this is a very thick ink, so I can just kind of blend that out. If I did that with a much darker ink, you might be able to see this, like, thumbprint-looking, you know, application of blue here, but, um, or whatever color you're using, but that's why we do it very light tones and slippery, so you can do this, which I never recommend doing, but if you have a big puddle of ink there, this just spreads around beautifully, you never have to worry about your tips. Right. It's kind of getting there. I'm not only applying this thing, I'm kind of going for a pretty decent um, I guess slathering of it, you know, for lack of a better word. A big, thick application with it. I've achieved what I want to achieve there. You see those kind of rays coming out? <laughs> it's going to be kind of important that I can kind of do the same thing down here. 
maybe in some kind of different shade or whatnot. All right, let's add some of this tone down here in the rocks, just so that um, the rocks and trees and grass have something in common with one another and are completely uh, kind of unrelated from a uh, color standpoint, you know? Even if we don't see blue on them eventually, um, It'll have kind of an undertone of blue, a tint of it, maybe a hint, a hint and tint of it. Okay. that I didn't match up particularly well with my ledge. I'm going to hit that right now. I'm doing that right now just because after I lay down a lot of ink on top of it, it tends to be a little bit more resistant to uh, additional um, layers of, you know, ink. So let's just hit it right now. Okay. to see where I inked up the stamp. I didn't ink it up completely, but... All right. So then I just kind of laid it right down in here. You can't even tell where it overlapped, right? Hopefully you can. But I just used the tip of this right here and just stamped it right over the top. All right, I think that's just about all I need. Or is it? I don't know, add a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna try to keep this uh, a little bit lighter, I guess, in tone. It's a get well card, not a sympathy card, you know, so. All right, now we can really tell <laughs> what's happening here in, in terms of lighting with this ink, right? It's quite a bit darker than the previous one. You just keep your, your strokes nice and light, okay? tend to go this way, but on this one I'm going to have to go kind of vertical, over, or horizontal, over this way, and then I'll go down this way. It's kind of a little bit of a different um, kind of stroke from my usual. Usually I'm not coming my kind of light emanation point is usually down below the horizon like a sunset or twilight type of thing. It's not usually in the middle of my paper. putting my finger right there so I can kind of, I'm going right towards the 
uh, kind of aiming towards my finger when I'm doing these uh, kind of these motions here. Now, what I start doing too is I start using the edge of my apple. This one's actually kind of ripped right here, but you can still use it. I'm using the edge quite often so I don't get so thick of an application. Just because it's a little bit easier for me to control. stroke because this is a much shorter distance from the edge of the page to that source, okay, to my light source. Just going to use a nice light touch. Going to kind of darken some of these in a little bit. I don't want it to look like like Phoenix Rising or anything like that. You know, I don't want things too explosive. You know, I want it more kind of tranquil and still. I don't want it to look like a you know something too explosive, which it is now. So I'm going to mellow some of these kind of light flares a little bit by making them a little bit darker and kind of reducing the amount of contrast. Okay, and I'll get rid of some of this texture on the outside by just adding more tone. Okay, something like that. This one's a little bit too wide. Let's kind of cut that one down a little bit. Just with some tone, not physically cut it. Um, okay. All right. Let's see, I think we need a little bit of color underneath here. I'm starting to see the light, so to speak, in terms of uh, kind of what the desirable type of look is going for. I had to add some tones in here. Now, I get some areas that are a little bit more illuminated, so there's, there's a little bit of an oscillation between the impressions. Okay, there's these impressions are both a little bit darker and lighter. Okay, and that's the thing that, 
at, at any given time, you know, in the process of a, you know, creation of a scene or scene lighting, it kind of comes, starts coming together at one stage in the game, and it's usually, um, for me, I would say just a general thing, it's usually kind of in the medium tones or so. When you just start to see, okay, this is making sense, you know, with what you're kind of going after. So early on, you know, it was just, I don't know, it looked like whatever, anything very preliminary. And, um, you know, I often don't know where something's going unless I've completely done the, uh, you know, the type of thing seen before. But, um, it's not often not the case, you know, because I kind of mix things up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm getting at here is, um, I can see this light coming through the trees now by doing the same streaking thing down amongst the trees, okay? Now it starts to bring, start to bring some of the trees into the, uh, the color scheme a lot more, and the lighting scheme too. So I think things are looking like they make a little bit more sense to me um, from a visual standpoint. Okay, where is it? Right there. Wait. Yeah, I think it's right. Okay, now this is Danube Blue. It's moving into the uh, kind of navy blue-ish. Uh, color scheme. over here look like they're almost acting as a resist to the ink. Alright. That to me is looking a little bit too much. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll mellow out that area a little bit more with some more memento and I'll darken in some of those um, uh, beams of light. And it's a little bit too kind of explosive for me right now. I want to kind of mellow it a little bit more. Okay. Now let's start bringing in some additional tones into this um, these rock formations down here. Okay, I'm thinking about some desert sand, some gray tones, and then I'll start bringing in a little bit of warm cool into it. Touch. All right, now we already have our foundation of some of the uh, uh, blue, but where you can add warmth under cool, you can also add cool under warm. Like we, you know, we'll inevitably be doing here, or not inevitably, but um, well, like we'll end up having on this composition. I like having cools under warms and warms under cools. It just adds this degree of subtlety and it is not a lost cause even if you do cover up some ink or an ink of a certain temperature and it can give your scenes just a little bit more I don't know, you know, a comp 
complexity, maybe. Okay, this is desert sand. Um, let's try the old paper. Okay, distress ink. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite a bit warmer in tone. You can see that the difference between here and here. You have a little bit more of a yellowy look. It's not yellow, but um, you have that kind of warmth in this um, in this color. You can watch my video on how to um, introduce a little bit more. Um, scale and volume into your scenes using the scene itself as a reference point. So, in down to my shadows here, eventually I'll get to some additional um, uh, shading effects. Okay, here's a walnut stone. Quite a bit more of this brownish tinge to it, tint, whatever. I'm trying to add variation to these rocks. I'm having a little bit of tone on some areas and other areas I'm leaving as is. Um, the darker I go, um, kind of some in some ways the more varied I the more darker the darker I you know create certain areas, the more um, areas that I leave as is so you can create that kind of oscillation across the surface of the scene, and thus add that element of uh, richness brought about by contrast and, I don't know, could be different temperatures, etc. within a thick of a scene. Okay, so, see that? What I mean by all of that is you just darken some areas and leave some areas lighter, and that way you get this sense of variety and variation and lighting, okay? All right, now, let me see this one. This is called Milled Lavender. I don't think I've even, I don't remember using it, but let me just see if this, make sure this is still wet. I've got a bunch of ink water in my applicator. Let me take one of that out, okay? After just kind of washing them. Oh, hmm. There's quite a bit of ink in there. I hadn't used it for a long, long time. In fact, I, I didn't even remember I had it, but um, that being said, it could be, there's the potential of it being very, very dry. God, there's something that's really juicy. Kind of adding this little bit of a reddish tinge. It's very light in value, so. See that little tinge of red in some areas? Okay. Now I'm starting to move it away from kind of the more daylighty area. I'm kind of moving into a darker 
look here, but we'll bring in those light beams. There's a difference between trying to create something, you know, on a just a white piece of paper and a photograph, okay? And, uh, you know, they, they have their, both have their strong points, of course, but there is a difference. And, um, I don't know, when it comes to things like lighting and shade and whatnot, things are relative, so if I take something and I make it a little bit darker, then a certain area becomes much lighter. When it comes to the rays that I'm going to be adding in here with pigment ink, if I don't take it a little bit darker, okay, they don't show up as much because if you have very light on light, you know, you can't see anything, but if you have light on medium or light on dark, then those rays are going to be much more prominent, so that's why I'm doing that, okay? It doesn't mean you have to, it doesn't mean you have to have really dark light beams that are, you know, of course, but this is a video, and that's kind of my aesthetic taste, is that there's, um, you know, whatever statement I'm making, um, I want it to be a little bit more prominent. That's not to say that things won't look good if you have kind of more of a, a lighter overall and kind of more of a pastel shaded um, scene, look over the entirety, okay? All right, so, all right. Um, speaking of that video on volumes, okay, I'm just going to add some deeper types of uh, shadows within these rocks, okay? There's there's variation in here, but I want to add more variation um, in specific little areas, okay? So what I like to do is I like to see where the shadows are on the, the designs themselves, and I'm just going in here and reiterating some of those shadows. Okay, so like say along that little ridge line, I just dabbed in a little bit of ink, you know, kind of using the edge of this. There's just a little bit more shade, uh, shading in here. The rocks seem a little bit more dimensional. Okay, I've just done that with a couple of them so far. Let's go in and do it with a few more. I'm just adding it right in the shadows. I don't have to create shadows. I mean, you certainly could if you want to, but I'm just kind of going in and seeing where the rocks are darker, you know, in the tone that they've been created with, called stippling. I'm just adding a little bit more grayscale so it's not a big, thick slathering of black ink like that. I'm just going in and doing this type of thing. That in some of these areas. Okay, let's take a look. See down here. See that? Now that rock looks a little bit more dimensional to me.
of shadows at the base of the tree, although I will have some light kind of streaming through there, but I can add some shadows down there now. You want to get all this kind of added in before you start laying down uh, some of these pigment ink layers over the top, because you can't really... Well, you can a little bit, but um, it's a little bit uh, harder to do, but just kind of adding tone over the top of the pigment ink, you know, the pigment ink kind of starts coming off if you start doing that, you know, because it's just kind of sitting on the surface of the paper, almost like a like a pastel or something like that after it dries, so try to get all of your tonal color statements kind of out of the way um, before you start adding that type of thing into the mix, and you'll be fine. Okay, kind of going a little bit darker on my left and right corner, I think. The more I do that, the lighter this area is going to seem by contrast. a little bit more like rocks to me, I think, you know, adding in these shadows, gray tone shadows to things. They seem a little bit more fleshed out to me. This is uh, several impressions, of course, with the same image, but um, by kind of doing all this, you're kind of unifying all of them together as well with common, similar tones and uh, shadows. doing these videos all right should mean um, I think I'm done but I realize that I can do something else <laughs> unless I just say that like I don't know ten times I love details so I'm always kind of thinking oh here's another one that I didn't get or I don't know something like that but sometimes when you're doing it um, 
it isn't apparent, it's just like having someone else proofread something, you know, you might kind of take a look at it, but, you know, with an outside eye, you might kind of reveal something that you missed. In this case, uh, it's just me, but um, I might say something a few minutes later. All right, I think that looks pretty good then. You know, we have this area left in here for some of those additional beams. I'm really looking forward to that. Because I love adding those in there. It makes such a dramatic um, um, statement. Boy, I'm getting these fingerprinty things all over here in black ink off of the butt, uh, base here. So, Let's see how it is. Little smudgies. This stuff is the things, though, you know, to me, eh, it doesn't really bother me too much. I see them, but, you know, and I, it isn't my preference that they're there, but, um, I don't know, I don't really sweat that stuff. But that being said, I'll, I'll see if I can kind of blend them in a little bit more. I'll just go back to that uh, Danube Blue and add an additional layer right over the top of this. I'm doing this, I'm probably putting more down with, with my finger here. I'll use this paper towel. This darker blue into the rocks. It doesn't look like dark blue or anything like that because it's over all the browns and everything like that. So, all right. Now, for the fun part of that, uh, those rays within that space there. So, I have to figure out how to do that. What's kind of appropriate for the uh, for that statement and. Uh, also, we'll look at some other things in here. Oh, another thing that I really like is uh, alcohol pens, gel pens, whatnot. But I'll kind of do the alcohol pens that are out here for a little bit more detail. And I need to take a break here, but we'll be right back for that. Okay. The scene is. Uh, had a couple hours to kind of settle and dry, which isn't necessarily a good thing sometimes, but sometimes it can be. You can have a kind of a better idea of um, what it looks like um, or what it's going to look like when it dries. But that being said, you can always um, kind of bring back the, uh, the intensity with um, some uh, spray sealant. All right, I'm testing these uh, pens that I pulled out earlier, and I think I'm going to give them or these rocks a nice tint. Okay, these are alcohol inks. And I'm going for a little bit more of an intensity to these rocks down here. It's kind of uh, closer to what the, uh, the scene looked like when it was uh, moist after with uh, the dye-based inks. And then we'll see how this dries too. Um, always kind of hard to tell. But you just kind of go with it. 
And I'm kind of just giving a slattering practically over this, you know, the entire rock surface. We got some variations though still from the use of the dye-based inks underneath because alcohol inks are always transparent, so. As far as I know, I don't think there's any uh, that are more translucent or opaque at this point in time. All right, let's see, that was a fairly light one. Now let me go in and I will try to define some more of these shadows just like I did with the black ink. I'll get kind of some deeper um, shadow areas and once again, I'm just kind of reiterating the, um, the tones and values within the designs themselves. So if there's kind of a shadow in the rock design, I'm just reiterating it with some additional shadow, okay? And that makes these rocks seem a little more dimensional, three-dimensional, that is. It gives them volume, you know, instead of looking like a, a two-dimensional piece. Gives them a little bit more of a that illusion that you know, they're uh, not coming out of the scene, but just you know, there's this kind of a, a richer value scheme, saying that there's variation in the rocks in terms of. Um, volumes, like I said, but also kind of some texture. We're saying that depending on where a crack is or something like that, there's light falling on it in a different way. Or let's say under these trees here, you can cast um, some shadows by them. Okay. Make areas look a little bit darker underneath maybe making areas a little bit darker underneath a, an object. Um, we're saying that those objects cast shadows and, you know, make, they make um, light fall on the surfaces in different ways. Right now, after I go into it with kind of a darker one, what I can do is I usually go back in with my lighter one, and I just kind of blend those out a little bit, you know, so I don't have such hard lines. You know, it, in this case at least, I, I don't want them to have a too... Uh, I don't know, too crisp of shadow, I, I think. Okay, that was the moment. Let's go into it with a little bit more variation again. There was that kind of reddish tinge. Let's try some of that in here, too. kind of hitting some, I don't know, just different areas. Yeah, I mean, that rocky surface, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can approach um, something like that. I just find that some variation in it gives it a little bit more of an interesting kind of a mass. Okay, this is a little bit of a brownish gray. I can kind of, again, emphasize those shadows.
I think that looks pretty good. I mean, there's just so much you can do, that's why I'm kind of laughing. It's, uh, it's really never-ending. There's a little bit of green if you want to you know, create a little bit of a relationship between the, the, the trees and, and this area. You can kind of put a little tinge of green into it. Just for some kicks. This is a very pale green, of course. You know. If I say, of course, you know, for the fact that when I'm doing this, you probably can't even tell, you know, except in a very, very subtle way. It's not dry, it's just super light in value. But, see that? I don't know, you can tell a little tinge down there. I think that gives it a pretty good look. All right, let's take a look at that sky again and evaluating. I think it looks okay. Now, as far as like bringing out those those light beams within there, okay, crepuscular rays. They look like they're emanating from somewhere, like a single source. But in every book that I have, they just always tend to uh, to point out that these rays are parallel with each other. They don't emanate like this, like towards this. It's, it looks like that because it's kind of traveling off in perspective, so um, I don't know. It always kind of baffles me. All right, I'm going back in with some summer sky here. I just wanted to kind of uh, reinvigorate some of those kind of darker tones. I want to see uh, what this is going to look like. I mean, I'm not going to let this dry, or I guess if I let it dry, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, spray seal it so I'll be able to see the, you know, the intensity of how the scene looks when it's kind of wet, okay, freshly stamped. These memento inks and uh, the ranger ones, the distress inks, they, for me on the paper that I'm using, um, tends to dry kind of dull, but you just spray seal it and it'll, it'll bring back the, uh, the vibrancy of um, uh, a wet, you know, freshly applied ink applied card surface. All right, so that is that. This blue is so very, very light in value. All right, now, I'm sure this looks quite different than um, my source material, but that's fine. I know it would. All right, now, here's the thing. I, I need another, well, I have this amp. Actually, this canary might work. I'm going to try to use that canary. I've done this before, and the colored rays, the beam that I tried it with before, didn't look a whole lot different than white, you know, except it was just kind of darker. I couldn't, I couldn't even tell the, you know, the warmth aspect of it, but I'll do it again here and we'll see what it looks like, okay? I'll probably do it two-toned. My beams of light, rays, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'll have it kind of yellow and white, so I'll try to kind of uh, push the uh, temperature of the uh, of the rays. And I'm going to try to play around with um, distance. Okay, so I'll have some of the rays kind of, it's Presumably, you know, whatever, back there on the horizon. So I'll have it kind of coming through some of these trees in front of, in back of some trees and in front of others. That way we kind of create this idea that 
of space, we're saying that all of these trees aren't just like in a you know, picket fence row, okay? They're at different distances from each other. So that's why you bring some in front of and some in back of um, others, okay? Now these trees in the background are way in the back, so. Let's try that first. Now I gotta find that one area. I think I was, I think I was aiming everything from that little spot, that little open spot in there. So I'll use that as my, um, kind of my source of light, okay? And let's do it this way. Okay, let's go something like that. I'll come down this way. <laughs> I gotta see where my uh, trees are like that. I'm doing this upside down just so I can have access to this spot. Okay, so it's going to start from right there and kind of come down that way. All right, so I'm going to use my, this one's my real wet one, <laughs> color box, frost white. Maybe I'll use the, maybe I'll use the hero hues. This one's really wet, so I need to be careful. Okay, cotton swab, the ultimate um, pigment ink applicator. Inexpensive and does the trick for me at least. All right, big thing, dab off a lot of the ink if your pad is really super juicy like this one is. You don't want to go in there with a you know, big slathering of uh, ink. You kind of want to keep it um, kind of a powdery type of application, meaning kind of a dry brushed application of of a uh, ink. Okay. So let's go about like so. Okay, see how that kind of emanates? It's thicker to thin. Okay, that's what we're going for. Kind of put some behind some of that tree and in front of. You gotta kind of remember what you're looking at here, you know, so. The, my foreground tree is right here, and this is the back right here, okay? And I'm running it through my trees, my background trees, the pine row. And now I'm taking this. This is a little bit, I'm just trying to use that um, um, used tip side. It's a little bit too hard, so I'll go I'll switch over to my newer one. All right, now this is going to, my white dye-based ink, I don't know if this was with all of them, but the two that I have both dry, darker than how they look when they're wet. It's kind of the opposite with dye-based inks. Um, those ones often look lighter than they do when freshly stamped, you know, when they dry. So pigment ink, it seems to dry darker, not lighter, okay? So you can take it and make it a little bit um, lighter than what you think might be ideal. Okay, so here it is coming out of there. I'm gonna t remove some out here, okay? And it's coming off, you know, on my finger here, so I want that to kind of have a little bit more intensity back over here and or here and then it fades out over there. Okay. All right. So we'll have it, some of it coming down this way. I'm having it come right across the rocks. This one will be coming from underneath the tree and in front of the other tree. So uh, there's no set formula, you know, for doing this. You just kind of have to Just play it however way you want to play it. Um, you know, just set it up um, how wide your beam is. I would suggest a variety of um, kind of widths, you know, so that um, you won't have that monotony. Ooh, way too much ink on there, okay. I'm putting some in for a little bit on my tree. Now 
Now, sometimes I don't do this equal. I don't just fill in this space. I like to do what I call these curtains, where there's more pigment ink on one side of the that beam, that ray, and it's a little bit lighter on the other side. Okay, this is kind of varying degrees of translucency. It looks weird because it looks like a like you put like a you know a spotlight back there or something like that at this point in time. So yeah, I don't know if I like that around there. Here I have it. I'll have it kind of coming out from underneath the tree right here. All right, but I'll just kind of give it a general kind of glow. You know, back of this tree, so I'll kind of diffuse it a little bit. Otherwise, kind of the beams look a little bit too sharp, so you just kind of add some of this in different areas as well. Okay, like right in there, there's some pigment kind of used in there. I'll have some of this coming, coming up this way and this way. Okay, maybe something right in here. Maybe I'll make it really kind of short, okay. Is, is it's kind of it's about variation um, and it's about definition kind of having these crisp beams then kind of diffusion so they kind of blend in too you know with the background so you want them to kind of stand out enough but you don't want them to just kind of stick out as kind of an odd shape kind of going on in the background, you know. So you kind of have to make them kind of related to the rest of the scene, too. See, right now it's just, they look like, I don't know, bars or something like that, you know. Um, kind of a little bit too strong, but you know, we're not done yet though. We'll kind of incorporate them in a little bit more or, or a lot more. Um, boy, that pigment ink is really wet. It's a brand new pad, by the way. That's why it's kind of really thick. that one so it's just kind of hanging and I think I'll do the same for a lot of these too okay and plus 
Plus, I don't want it to look too symmetrical, like bicycle spokes, too, either, so. I might be altering some of this by quite a bit. side I need to use. Okay, this one I want to decrease a little bit. I'm just going to tap my finger over it. And kind of like just polishing off some of that. Or buffing some of it out. Okay, I think we have some pretty definitive ones in here. Let's see. Oh, let's throw another beam, I'll put it in front of a couple of these other trees, but in back of the, uh, kind of the foremost one. start moving up into the sky. All right, now I haven't forgot about that warmer tone tinge or whatever. I'll try that and see if it kind of even shows up at all. I don't know if it will. Okay, now I created some of these beams by using dark and retaining some of the white of the paper. Now I'll just go back in and I'll just utilize some of this white pigment ink to apply over some of the blue just to kind of emphasize some of these beams, you know, a little bit more than they already are. We'll see if it if it does that or not, I'm not sure. Let's take this one 
knock that down some. Okay. Too much down here. Let's let me take off some of that. I don't want it so definitive like that. When I do this, these pigment ink applications, I th I've mentioned it in other videos, sometimes I really end up taking off more than I apply. Um, that's, you know, when I was talking about that, it was more um, of like fog or something like that than light beams, but you see that looks better now. It's not so extreme. They're there, but it's not so harsh. Okay. All right, now I need to really have a couple of these types of things up here somewhere. Okay. It doesn't have to be everywhere, just, you know, in a couple areas at least. Just to kind of match things a little bit more from top and bottom. I don't know if that's the way it looked in the photo, but... Anyways, this is kind of where I, I think I would just start taking things on their own if I was referencing the photograph, because there's a lot of variation that you can create with, um, you know, this type of technique. And you just kind of want to take things how they just seem to naturally want to go. And, I, and some people would be like, well, I'm not sure which way it want to go. Well, if you're trying to get things, something kind of a specific way, and it doesn't seem to want to go there, I mean, there's something to be said for, you know, really trying to work it and figuring out a way to achieve something. But um, sometimes there's a different answer to, you know, a given visual that you're going after that might be kind of more effortless and thus, you know, more of a graceful kind of end result, so. Um, that being said, as it applies to this card, I'm just kind of adding, you know, certain types of diffusion around in here, giving it the illusion that light is kind of hitting some areas, and And that's one of those things that um, that you can do with something like this um, when you're doing these types of applications, because it is a texture, and what we're doing is we're bringing in kind of universal textures over a variety of surfaces in here, and that's not necessarily you know something that you know would be happening out in nature all the time, okay? It's just that we're using inks here, so. All right, I have a harsh line right here and it's too vertical, so I'm going to remove some of that. It's a little bit too harsh, I like the, kind of the flare kind of happening like this, but not straight down, it's too vertical. It's like signpost or something, or telephone pole-ish. Let's take that out. That's the beauty of this pigment ink here, you know. Um, besides the, um, the brilliance pad, which is um, kind of one of those things that are faster drying on glossy cardstock or any cardstock. Um, and it's for a reason, it's not that it's a bad thing, it's, it's good that it does that, but if you're trying to do it on something like this, there's it's harder to edit it, you know, so. Okay, now, let's see, let's go with some more of this down here. What occurred to me in this scene, um, when I'm doing this, I, I find that the curtains kind of up above, I'm kind of giving the, you know, the straighter, you know, line on the bottom of it, okay? Uh, the bottom of the ray. Where the ray's down here, I have the uh, a straighter line on the top, so 
you know, what I was talking about, the, the kind of adding a variation of line, or of ray. So I kind of, so see these ones down here, I kind of have a harder line up here, and it gets soft down here. There's a harder line there, and there's a harder line on the top. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but... Anyway, so that's kind of what's happening so far. Okay, so here. Can I redefine that line a little bit? Ray. Sunbeam, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Okay, now let's see what we can do about, um, some warmer beams, perhaps, or a hint of warmth, in a beam or two, at least. I'm still not happy with this. I, I want, I need a little bit more balance here, so... Okay, let, let me add another beam over here somewhere. Now I have one coming around right there. Let's maybe I can emphasize it a little bit more. So let's try with let's go in with the uh, the yellow canary. Okay, let's see what that'll do. All right, this is just kind of where I wanted it. When I tap this down here, it looks pretty pale. All right, and I think that I don't know might serve the purpose. Might serve its purpose. In terms of creating a little bit of a temperature variation. I can tell it's kind of a uh, like a cream slight warmth that ray. All right. Tell the difference between that one and like these other ones. I still don't want that coming out of that that beam so harshly though. Okay. It's subtle for sure, okay. But that's what I want though. At least at this point in time. I want it subtle. I, I don't want it to be a like a gigantic uh you know temperature shift. Okay, that looks pretty good and in terms of the temperature, okay, it's, it's giving me some variety here. And I'm getting that, that warmth that I, that I seek here in terms of the, uh, these rays, these, these downward rays. Now I'm not putting it over everything, I still have some of that just pure you know, white paper and ink kind of out here. So it's a little bit warmer up here by the source and it kind of dissipates a little bit. Dissipates in terms of um, the amount of translucency 
or opacity, whatever. Um, and then showing so it kind of peters out. So it's kind of the the idea here is um, that the source right in here is kind of a warm light, and as you know, the farther away we get from that warm light, it kind of cools a little bit. So it's a little bit warmer up here than down here. It's I just left it left it white. Okay, I'll put a little bit of this warm light in here as well around these trees. It's kind of interesting because I usually don't work with um, colored pigment ink here, but or in my scenes, but this looks pretty good actually. I'm gonna have to do that more often. Do you remember how I was kind of coloring some of these trees, like the inside portion, uh, you know, a lighter tone before making the impressions on them? Well, I can go in, add some of this pigment ink to, you know, the same size of the tree or something like that, or, you know, to, to get a little bit of that variation. Okay, now, there's a little bit of warmer light in here. Now, I, what I want to do is I want to push these side trees back a little bit farther from a visual standpoint. Okay, so let me go back with my white pigment ink and do just that, okay? And plus, having a little bit of this extra texture with pigment ink, you know, won't hurt. I, I think it, ooh, <laughs> see how much is on there. I honestly don't think I took that much. It's a big blob down there. So what I'll do is I'll just, I just took most of it off of this. I'll just kind of move it around with a, you know, swab here. Now remember the whole reason for these beams to be showing is that you're saying that there's kind of little some moisture in the air so I'm putting this moisture in the air in the form of some kind of ground level fog okay that you can't see in everywhere because it's not being illuminated as much so um, but you can see it in the form of these rays where you know some beams of rays are Illuminating that suspended, suspended uh, moisture in the air, uh, otherwise known as fog or mist or whatever. Okay, so kind of giving that that airy kind of feel. these trees way back in the distance, I'll really kind of knock them down in terms of their intensity by putting in a wall of a kind of fog back there. Right. I'll do the same on the other side. See if I have a, uh, a quote stamp on kind of sunshine or light rays. I, I thought I did. I'll have to check. This 
one thing about this scene, it's, it's very, very symmetrical. It's like a pyramid, with the pyramid, you know, directly in the middle of the, uh, of the, uh, composition. Pushing those background trees back a little bit more. Kind of putting them in a kind of a veil of illuminated mist. Remember, um, these will dry, in my experience, darker, so I'm adding quite a bit of this down right now, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. It looks kind of extreme. It looks okay though, but um, a little extreme, I guess. I don't know. Putting some of this on the rocks, kind of softening up some of these beams here and there. Just so they're not so sharp. all over the place, but let's go down and add a little bit of this warm um, touch as well.
Okay. Hmm. I think this needs something. The photograph doesn't have it, but as far as this composition goes, it is a stamped composition. And what a photograph has inherently, things are defined by light. We need to, I think, create a stronger kind of containment, you know, for the different colors that we've used, the different media, instead of this universal light falling on, you know, a landscape, which is already inherently, you know, um, kind of cohesive in terms of a visual statement. We're bringing in all these other things into the mix to try and mimic in some way, you know, this natural visual. All right, what I'm getting at here is, um, um, the sky looks, and the ground look a little bit, um, a little bit too different from one another. Okay, we need uh, a little bit more continuity with both. Okay, now there's a simple thing. Now I just laid down some memento because I wanted to move into I don't know, the Marvy or the black again, okay? So, um, I'm just re-moistening the perimeter with a lighter tone of ink before I go into it with black. So I don't want to be adding black into kind of a dry perimeter um, here. I guess I want this black to go in there very gracefully. And the black I'm using is Marvy black, which is a, Marvies are a little bit of a thinner uh, ink in terms of their viscosity, so I don't want it to be just soaking into the paper and giving me oval shapes like that, okay? All right, so here we go. By moistening the perimeter, not as much ink comes off of this um, as it would on a dry piece of paper because, you know, dry surface would be kind of absorbing and grabbing the ink very quickly. So this kind of gives me the ability to put on very light shades of uh, this color and uh, in a very graceful way, I guess you can say. Let's get in some additional tone. Okay. I have those darker tones, but it, eh, maybe I need some medium on here as well. Let's go back to that. I tell you what, Marvy number 10 blue. I'm just going to apply it right with this, you know, black here. Okay.
I'm applying this right over the top of some of my pigment ink, so it kind of feels a little bit weird. All right, that's kind of bringing it together a little bit more. I'm going into the scene a little bit more, too. Of interesting there's some pigment ink on there so I'm kind of pulling it out and it is giving me a lighter streak um, just kind of interesting I wouldn't think it would do that okay hmm deep rich blue in the perimeter. like that we often see some um, lichen on them let's go for some green All right this is a way to introduce some of the green from the trees down here again okay giving it a little bit of continuity just <laughs> going to do this in the form of these kind of little dots. All right. Maybe I'll add those in in areas where um, it's approximately that color dot is approximately the same color or tone as something in here. Okay, so it doesn't stand out so much. Okay, I want these to be kind of a little accent. Um, textures, colors. I don't want it to stand out too much. I want it to be one of those things where kind of someone notices upon kind of closer inspection, you know. All right. It's standing out a little bit too intense for me in some areas, but that's okay because I like it is usually layered, so. Let me see if I have some, some something that's kind of akin to maybe an ochre, maybe or brown. I have a lot of these pens, um, but a lot of them are um, kind of like a glitter pen. Is this one glitter? Glitter ones have a bunch of glitter on the barrel. This one's just like brown. Okay. Yeah. So I'll layer some of that brown in there. I'll go over the tops of some of those green ones. And I've kind of already used some of this similar color in my color scheme here. All right. I'll show you what I'm going for. These types of marks, okay. Same down here, kind of right around in here. All right, let's be a little bolder. All right. Um, Looking for a color. If you haven't seen my video on um, um, this pen set, it's pretty interesting. It's uh, 
is red. It's a 180 color uh, gel pen set. And you can find them on uh, Amazon or maybe some other websites as well. Okay, this is red. All right. Sometimes there's that really reddish lichen. these rocks, on these types of rocks. It's like all, it's like as red as a, like a fall leaf. I love going in and doing these types of uh, little details in, uh, at the end of, um, there's a kind of a lime green, at the end of a, a scene, I haven't even used this one yet, let me get it rolling. Alright, this one's not rolling, let me see if I get it flowing, just throw on the cap, give it a few wax. I'd say good is new, but this is probably the first time I've ever used it, so it is new, all right? And it flows just fine. It's pretty extreme, so I'm not going to add too much of it. Alright, okay, so here it is down in these rocks in a couple of areas. This is, you know, kind of more true to the, uh, the viewing distance you'd be looking at something. I don't know if we could look at it like that. If we look at it and scrutinize it, it looks a little weird. It looks pretty dimensional though, but... Alright, so let's take a look here. I'm going to add some of this pen, okay, because it's kind of a light green, all right, and I'll get maybe give these edges, of, you know, some of my trees a little bit more lighting by having some of these highlights on there. It's really hard to tell where, you know, something would be illuminated, so I just kind of put it on this and that, and I just kind of fake it, you know. I say, okay, that tree would be receiving some of that light there on that side, but maybe on this side, it'd be the opposite side. Or here, sorry. That little tree back there on the right-hand side of it, it would be illuminated with the light coming from here. So putting my illumination on the side facing it. You can even have this tree out here you're kind of reacting the same way. I put a few little highlights on the side facing that light source. Okay. And let's do the same thing with some of these trees down here. They'll be left side illuminated. See, so I'm just kind of doing with this gel pen what I kind of tried to do in the coloring of the trees before I made my impressions with them. I'm putting that highlighting on one side of the tree that happens to be pointed towards the source of light.
so hopefully we're getting a little bit more of an interesting look in here. It's a little bit more varied in that tree. Some highlights are on these trees. Instead of it looking so kind of flat, you know, just a little bit of highlight can make things potentially look a little bit more dimensional. Okay, now here we are to white. This white is going to be a little bit more translucent than my other white pens, which is good. Sometimes you don't want it to be too, you know, your highlights or whatever to be too obvious and strong. some highlights on some of these um, rocks in here, giving them a little bit more dimension. one, the Uniball Signo 1.0 in terms of the millimeters and the ball, roller ball size, okay. All right, let's do the same thing that we were doing before, but as far as the highlighting goes with this pen here. This one's going to stand out the most, okay. How much I use it remains to be seen. I, I have to really kind of take a look and see what it's going to be looking like. I'm scribbling it off because I'm picking up some of the, uh, the gel pen from the previous pens in given areas and it's kind of jamming up my ball, so I do a little scribble just to clear it out. Okay, I think this is going to be very effective in terms of a highlighting accent in some of these areas. trees right over here. We need a couple out there. And I put on a few little highlights here and there. It's kind of tough adding some over the pigment ink because the pigment ink is that kind of dry frosty layer on there. So if you kind of add this roller ball kind of application on some of that, it the pigment ink that's kind of already laying down there kind of reconstitutes 
and it jams up your pen again, but no worries. You can kind of deal with that. But you do kind of have to keep um, unclogging. Which means you just get a little scribble like that to get it flowing again. Okay, there is that. I mean, this, this scene could have been done. These are subtle little things that I like adding into it. For me, they add a little bit of a, these little details like that add that kind of that microscopic, it's not microscopic, but that little touch that I think can put a scene kind of, it can take it one extra step or level or whatnot. All right, now I was going in with those um, little colored dots. I have this tiny rock stamp. I haven't done this using this before, but why not? Okay, this is jungle green. Let me see what this looks like on here. Okay. I'm just adding that texture here and there. I think that can add to a little bit of a the textural range or richness in here. It's very subtle in some ways or in many ways because it's you know the colors are already established in the uh, with the coloring of the uh, ledge, but I don't know. I can see this on here. And it looks pretty good. It's standing out a little bit, but it'll dry lighter than how it looks right now. Okay, so this is what this is looking like. It's looking like that. Um, sorry, it's looking like that on top of here. It's really not terribly discernible, I'm sure. Okay, let's try it with this right here. Hmm. Let me do something to um, try a couple other colors. Like, this is wine. I'm not sure if I have the guts <laughs> to put that one down there, but I did use kind of a similar color in the gel pen and some of the colors that I brought into this. see it. It's so light. That's a little bit of texture. Yeah, I can barely see it and it's a few inches from the face, of course. All right, here's dark brown. Okay. Is, this is one of my favorite stamps. It's just so simple, but I like texture, so sometimes extending kind of the textural range of something can really add a nice 
touch. It could either be very subtle or, or it can stand out. It just depends on how much you want. If you want it to stand out, then stamp it darker. If you want it very subtle, then do lighter impressions of it. It works in, of course, ground, you know, scenes like, you know, dirt or whatever, but it also works in things like grass. Um, in terms of just kind of breaking up the monotony of it. Okay, um, I need one more stamp, and that's uh, a little branch twig that I'm going to put down into this um, foreground here, just to kind of break it up a little bit more in terms of the um, types of shapes that are on there. And I thought I had it on my desk, but I think I need to go look for it. All right. I found it. It's this little winter twigs um, stamp. Pull off my uh, tiny rocks. This is a really small stamp. And also, one of the things I found was I had a video on masking using this ledge stamp. I'm going to use this mask. So already this comes in handy for me again. So. Um, where is this? Let me see some of these shapes. I'm trying to match it up. Okay. Oh, here it is right there, I think. All right, so I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. Okay, I'm going to do this in black ink, and we'll put a few of these little twigs in uh, a couple locations. Kind of growing out of the cracks. You all can see these um, little branches getting established. You see that down there? You often wonder why do why do trees and things like that grow in a like a crack? You know, and um, it seems to be that they get. They're nice and firmly kind of planted or positioned in a given area. You know, they're anchored in so they don't, won't just kind of wash away because, you know, they're anchored into that little crack or crevice or whatnot. They seem like pine trees and things growing out. All right, I'm trying to find... <laughs> this thing integrates so well that it's... Sometimes it's hard to match it up because I can't find where one image ends and the other one begins. Here's the whole image right here. Let me see. Let me look for that little pattern right there. Okay, there it is right over here. It's like that. Oh, okay, that's where it is. I don't know if I want that up there so far, though. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to, this doesn't have to be precise or anything like that, but. I'll just use this as a general mask here. Get some more of these twigs in here. See how good that looks right there? We have a couple more down here coming out of that space. You can see that where it's darker back there and lighter here. We're saying that there's some space in between those two, so let's go and mask off that. subtle little textural elements to just kind of break up you know the forms in here a little bit with a little bit of a different texture maybe I'll just use the tips of it up here uh, so you can see it down here what that does Kind of integrates it a little bit more and creates space in between some of the rocks. 
It just makes it look a little bit more dimensional. I don't know. For, for some reason, this scene has kind of become about these uh, rocks down here for me in terms of the <laughs> my interest level instead of its, you know, kind of the more powerful aspect of those rays. But I don't know. It, it's, I'm finding the fun down here. But I don't know. That certainly doesn't play an insignificant part as far as... Um, kind of the power of the piece. Okay, but anyways, we have these rays coming down here, all right? They're a little bit subtle. And we have those light rays up there. They're a little bit too strong. It looks like this thing way back in the distance instead of it kind of being amongst these trees. I, maybe I'd need to uh, come in front of the tree a little bit more kind of to envelop the um, a couple of these trees in that light, seeing that it's not so far back. Let me just try to do that a little bit here. I won't do it too much, too much, because I think it looks fine just as is, and it could be that just, you know, that's just the way that this kind of came to be. Like I said, you just gotta kind of take the uh, scene in a direction that it seems to want to go sometimes more than trying to force it into, you know, kind of uh, something that it just doesn't fit as well. Okay. Meaning that if those rays look good, and they look good like they're supposed to be at, you know, really distant um, um, distance, distance from, you know, where these trees are, then so be it. We'll just let them let them be far, you know? Um, let the rays be far away. If they look okay, then, you know, who cares? Um, who cares what uh, the reference material was? You know, we're not going to display the scene with the other piece, you know, it's going to be a card that's going to someone, so. Just wanted to make it look the best that you can, or that it can be. is it. Backlit pines over granite. I don't know. That's a terrible uh, title for this. But that's kind of what it is. Pines over granite? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, so, hmm, what did I learn about this piece? Well, I learned that I haven't done those light rays in a while, so, um, I don't know, when I do something, I just kind of move on from it, and I tried a few things, but these beams down here um, kind of stamp two 
are defined too um, crisp and symmetrically kind of look awkward. I think this looks a little bit more natural where it just kind of diffuses out a little bit. I thought I'd be doing kind of stronger beams in this one piece, but I, I don't think it served it well. Um, so, you know, I just made my adjustment. I removed a lot of the ink and I removed a lot of the uh, kind of how far some of these reach. You can just go in there and just kind of blot them off. Um, I was going to do some more definitive things up here too, but I ended up just kind of bringing in some more tone and kind of subduing some of those longer finger reaching things, and I thought that looked better. Framed off the edges a little bit more to bring more emphasis to the uh, the lighting in here, and just to having some black up there and black down here. This is so bottom heavy. Okay, I just needed to put a little bit more weight you know, up top here with some additional tone um, and value, and I think that worked out pretty well, so. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of curious to see what um, matting choices I have here for this, and what I'd like to emphasize in this scene, but I'd like to thank you for watching the video. If you were able to sit through this, there was a lot of uncertainty and kind of changes that happened in the process. And uh, I don't know, it was really fun. I really enjoyed kind of bringing this together at the end with these little textural statements in here. I, I, you know, I, I do believe those little things like that can really make a big difference um, uh, in the overall, just in terms of, especially something like this, we're just talking about one, two, three stamps, basically. But just bringing in that fourth little element or those little textures in here. Um, just kind of make it seem like a, you know, more complete statement um, in terms of the finished piece, though. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, I encourage you to play around with these types of beams like that. Use your finger. <laughs> as part of the tool to remove and add more and whatnot, okay? All right, thanks again.